Hey guys, my name is William and I'll be your speaker today. This video is part one of a two-part lecture on different relationships within triangles. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying the geometry series so far and please stay tuned for future videos. Alright, let's get started. Now that we know a lot more about triangles, let's look at some more in-depth details. If you need more help on triangle properties or just geometry properties as a whole, please be sure to check out our previous Geometry with Proof videos. Alright, let's begin by talking about triangle mid-segments. A mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects two midpoints of two sides of a triangle. This divides the two sides into congruent halves because they are connected by the midpoint. This divides those two sides into congruent halves because mid-segments are created by the connection of midpoints. Furthermore, there are three mid-segments per triangle. Now let's take a look at the triangle mid-segment theorem. By the triangle mid-segment theorem, the mid-segment of a triangle is always parallel and half as long to the third side. As seen in this diagram, segment DE is half the length of segment BC. These two segments are also parallel. Alright, let's take a look at a practice problem on the triangle mid-segment theorem. Given that segment XC has a length of 4, what is the length of segment VW? Remember to use the triangle mid-segment theorem to your advantage. You have 10 seconds, time starts now. Good luck. Okay, now that time has elapsed, let's take a look at the solution. By the triangle mid-segment theorem, which we just learned about, the length of segment VW must be double that of segment XZ. Therefore, since XZ is 4, VW has a length of 4 times 2, which is 8. This should be easy enough for most of you, it's pretty intuitive. Now let's take a look at bisectors and triangles. The perpendicular bisector theorem, as depicted by the diagram above, states that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, it must also be equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. In this case, since point P is on the perpendicular bisector of AB, which is PM, PA must also be equal to PB. On the other hand, the converse of the perpendicular bisector's theorem states that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, it must also be on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. Therefore, in this case, the justification is since PA is equal to PB, this means that P is on the perpendicular bisector of AB, which turns out to be PM. Alright, let's move on to this practice problem. If segments VW and WX are congruent, and segment UX has a length of 35, what is the length of segment UV? Again, try to use the perpendicular bisector theorems, whether it be the normal theorem or the converse. You have 10 seconds, time starts now, good luck. Okay, now that 10 seconds has passed by, let's take a look at the solution. By the converse of the perpendicular bisector's theorem, the length of UX must equal the length of UV. This is because VW is congruent to WX, which means that W must be on the perpendicular bisector of segment VX. Hence, this makes U the midpoint of segment VX, and therefore UX equals UV, which is also 35. Moving on. The angle bisector theorem states that if a point is on the bisector of an angle, it must also be equidistant from the sides of that angle. Since in the diagram, point S is on the bisector of angle Q, SP must be equal to SR. There's also a converse for this theorem. If a point in the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of that angle, it must be on the angle bisector. This problem is asking us to find the length of Rm. It's also given that Rm is equal to 7x while Rp is equal to 2x plus 25. Use the angle bisector theorems to find the length of Rm. You have 10 seconds. Time starts now. Alright, let's take a look at this problem. Since Rn bisects angle N, we know that Rm is equal to Rp. Therefore, 7x is equal to 2x plus 25. We can then conclude that x is equal to 5 and that Rm is equal to 7 times 5, 35. 
All right, now let's learn about medians and altitudes. A median is a segment in a triangle whose endpoints are a random vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side of that vertex. If that sounds kind of confusing, please refer to the diagram above. Again, remember that there are three medians in a triangle. Moving on, an altitude of a triangle. An altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side of the triangle. Remember that there are three altitudes per triangle and that altitudes can also exist outside of the triangle itself. All right, let's sum things up. In this episode, we learned about triangle mid-segments and their properties. We also talked about perpendicular and angle bisectors and triangles, as well as their respective theorems. Last but not least, we define medians and altitudes. Here's what you should expect in part two of this two-part lecture. First of all, I'll go over concurrencies, new theorems, and of course, new vocabulary. We will also talk about special points in triangles and learn about inequalities in one triangle. And that's it. As always, thank you all so much for attending today's lecture, and we hope to see you in future videos. Thank you.